Right now, something unprecedented is happening beneath Naples. Two volcanoes, both shaking at the same time. For the first time in modern monitoring history, Vesuvius and Campi Flegre are experiencing simultaneous earthquake swarms that scientists cannot fully explain. The ground trembles under the feet of three million people. The question everyone is asking, are these two systems somehow connected? And if they are, what does that mean for one of Europe's most densely populated volcanic zones? This segment was added during editing because the seismic activity escalated so rapidly that silence felt irresponsible. The clustering is not random. The timing is not coincidence. Something has changed beneath southern Italy, and the world's most experienced volcano scientists are struggling to understand what. But the evidence keeps mounting. Late December 2024 marked a turning point. The Vesuvius Observatory, managed by Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, detected earthquake sequences at both volcanoes within the same 72-hour windows. Not aftershocks from a single event, not isolated tremors separated by weeks, coordinated swarms, Dozens of quakes at Vesuvius, hundreds at Campi Flegre, all happening while monitoring teams scrambled to process the data flooding into their control rooms in Naples. The earthquakes listed in official bulletins include only events above magnitude 1.0. Beneath that threshold, an entire world of microseismic activity churns through the crust. Thousands of tiny fractures, rocks splitting under pressure, fluids forcing pathways through stone. The complete picture is far more active than any public report can convey. Each magnitude 1.5 tremor at Vesuvius represents the visible tip of a much larger process occurring in darkness 2 to 4 kilometers below the surface. At Campi Flegre, the pattern intensified through November and December 2024. One week recorded 34 earthquakes, the next jumped to 76. Seismic swarms on December 15th and December 19th delivered sharp jolts to Pozzuoli, the coastal town built directly atop the caldera's most active zone. Each swarm lasted hours. Each consisted of tightly clustered events, sometimes separated by mere minutes. The largest reached magnitude 3.2, shallow enough that residents felt the ground lurch beneath their homes at 5 a.m. But the real shock was not Campi Flegre. Naples sits trapped between two volcanic systems, each capable of catastrophic destruction. Vesuvius rises nine kilometers to the east, its profile etched into the city's identity. Campi Flegre sprawls 13 kilometers wide to the west, mostly invisible beneath suburbs and harbors. For decades, scientists monitored them separately, assuming their magma systems operated independently. That assumption is now under serious reconsideration. When both volcanoes activate simultaneously, the risk compounds in ways evacuation models never anticipated. Three million people live within the greater Naples metropolitan area. Infrastructure designed for a single volcanic threat may collapse under the strain of coordinated unrest. Roads that lead away from Vesuvius may run straight into Campi Flegre's exclusion zones. Shelters planned for one eruption scenario become useless if both systems destabilize. The geographic trap is inescapable. Vesuvius has experienced earthquake swarms before, but the current activity stands apart from its recent history. Typical seismicity at Vesuvius consists of low-magnitude scattered tremors concentrated beneath the crater. The volcano produces an average of 50 to 100 locatable earthquakes per year, most under magnitude 2.0. Activity peaks during summer months when groundwater pressure shifts. Winter swarms are rare. December 2024 shattered that pattern. A cluster of earthquakes struck the volcano's edifice, some reaching magnitude 2.6, the highest recorded at Vesuvius in years. The swarm included events at multiple depths, from 200 meters below sea level to more than 3 kilometers deep. This depth variation suggests something more complex than simple settling or cooling-related fractures. The seismic network recorded hybrid earthquakes, signals that combine characteristics of both volcano-tectonic quakes and long-period events associated with fluid movement. 
Scientific papers published in 2024 documented unusual observations at Vesuvius. Ground deformation that had been subsiding for decades has stopped. The edifice is no longer sinking. In some sectors, subtle uplift has begun. These changes are measured in millimeters per year, far below what would trigger public alarms. But for a volcano that has been deflating since 1944, any reversal is significant. Something is shifting deep beneath the mountain. The seismic record tells a story of escalation. In late December 2024, Vesuvius produced more earthquakes in one week than it typically generates in a month. Magnitudes that once represented annual peaks became daily occurrences. The INGV Vesuvius Observatory expanded its monitoring protocols, deploying additional portable seismometers and increasing the frequency of gas measurements at summit fumaroles. Technicians reported slight increases in soil CO2 emissions, though levels remain far below what would indicate magma ascent. Comparing Vesuvius to Campi Phlegri reveals both similarities and differences. Both systems show increased seismicity, both involve shallow hypocenters, both exhibit signs of fluid movement beneath the surface. But Campi Phlegri's uplift is violent and sustained, raising the ground by more than 1.3 meters since 2005. Vesuvius remains comparatively quiet in terms of deformation. Its earthquakes hinted unrest, but the physical expression is subtle. Yet the timing cannot be ignored. For more than a century, geologists assumed Vesuvius and Campi Phlegri drew from separate magma sources. Vesuvius sits atop a roughly cylindrical conduit system, feeding from a reservoir 8 kilometers deep. Campi Phlegri's magma occupies a sprawling, sill-like chamber between 3 and 8 kilometers depth, spread across a much larger area. The two systems appeared isolated by distance and structure. Recent research has challenged that model. A 2012 study suggested that alkaline magmas beneath the Campanian Plain may share a common deep source. Geochemical analysis of erupted materials from both Vesuvius and Campi Phlegri revealed strikingly similar isotopic signatures, indicating the lavas originated from the same mantle region. This does not prove the volcanoes are directly connected at shallow depths, but it raises the possibility that stress changes in one system could influence the other. Scientists remain divided on this question. Some researchers argue that simultaneous unrest is coincidental, driven by independent hydrothermal processes or regional tectonic stress. Others point to the spatial proximity and shared geological setting as evidence that deep magmatic or crustal processes link the two systems. The debate continues in academic journals and monitoring room discussions. No consensus has emerged. The truth remains obscured by 10 kilometers of rock. What is certain is that Vesuvius has earned its reputation as one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes. The mountain has been erupting for at least 25,000 years, constructing and destroying its summit repeatedly through cycles of explosive violence. The modern cone sits inside the breached caldera of an older volcano, Monte Soma, which collapsed during a massive eruption around 17,000 years ago. That event ejected tens of cubic kilometers of magma and reshaped the entire region. Vesuvius has produced at least eight major explosive eruptions in the past 17,000 years. The most famous, in 79 AD, buried Pompeii and Herculaneum under pyroclastic surges and ash. But Pompeii was not an isolated catastrophe. Eruptions in 472 AD, 1631, 1906, and 1944 all caused significant destruction. The 1631 event killed an estimated 4,000 people and sent pyroclastic flows racing down the flanks toward the Bay of Naples. The volcano's eruptive style has varied dramatically over its history. Some periods produced sustained Plinian columns that injected ash into the stratosphere. Others delivered Strombolini fire fountains and lava flows. Still others generated violent sub-Plinian blasts with deadly pyroplastic density currents. The unpredictability is one reason emergency planners struggle to model worst-case scenarios. Vesuvius does not follow a single pattern. After the March 1944 eruption, the volcano fell silent. Lava flows that year destroyed the villages of San Sebastiano and Massa. 
The final explosions damaged the summit crater and filled the conduit with cooled magma, effectively capping the system. For 80 years, Vesuvius has remained in a state of repose. Fumaroles emit steam and sulfur gases, but no magma has reached the surface. Seismicity remained historically low, often dropping below 50 events per year. This prolonged quiet lulled some into complacency. The traditional explanation for Vesuvius's current seismicity attributes the earthquakes to structural adjustments as the edifice cools and contracts. Volcanic rock, once hot and plastic, becomes brittle as it solidifies. Thermal stresses crack the cooled magma plug. Gravitational settling shifts blocks of fractured material. Hydrothermal fluids circulating through fractures trigger small tremors when pressure changes suddenly. But the recent swarms include signals that do not fit this simple model. Hybrid earthquakes, detected in late 2024, suggest interactions between brittle failure and fluid movement. These events produce waveforms that combine sharp, high-frequency arrivals with lower-frequency oscillations, a signature often associated with gas or liquid forcing its way through rock. Some researchers interpret these signals as evidence of magmatic fluids migrating from depth, possibly related to reactivation of the system's deeper plumbing. Microfracturing offers another mechanism. As rock under stress approaches its failure threshold, countless tiny cracks form and propagate. Each fracture releases a minute amount of energy, too small to locate individually, but detectable as background tremor. When microfracturing accelerates, it can precede larger ruptures. Monitoring this process provides one of the few early warning signals available to volcanologists. Ground deformation at Vesuvius has followed a complex path over the past two decades. The lower flanks subsided slowly between 2000 and 2020, sinking by several centimeters as groundwater withdrew from shallow aquifers. But the Grand Cone, the summit area above 800 meters elevation, showed different behavior. Subsidence rates there slowed, then stopped entirely by 2022. Some GPS stations now record faint uplift, measured in millimeters per month. If this trend continues, Vesuvius could transition from deflation to inflation. Such a shift would mark a fundamental change in the volcano's state. Inflation typically signals the arrival of new magma, increased gas pressure, or heating of the hydrothermal system. None of these processes is benign. All increase the likelihood of future eruptions. The contrast with Compi Flegri could not be sharper. At Compi Flegri, the ground has risen by more than 1.3 meters since 2005. Uplift accelerated dramatically after 2011, reaching rates of 2 to 3 centimeters per month by mid-2024. The deformation centers on Poazzuoli, where streets have cracked, buildings have shifted, and the harbor has become too shallow for large vessels. Seismicity exploded in parallel, with monthly earthquake counts exceeding 1,000 during peak swarm periods. In 2024 and early 2025, Compi Flegri produced five earthquakes above magnitude 4.0, the strongest seismic events recorded there in 40 years. The largest, a magnitude 4.4 tremor on March 13, 2025, rattled the entire Naples metropolitan area. Scientists warned that earthquakes as large as magnitude 5.0 remain possible, powerful enough to damage historic buildings and critical infrastructure. The mechanism driving Compi Flegri's unrest has become clearer through recent research. A 2025 study published in Science Advances revealed that pressure buildup in a sealed geothermal reservoir beneath Pozzuoli is the primary cause of both uplift and earthquake swarms. Rainwater infiltrates the subsurface, accumulates in the reservoir, and converts to steam when heated by magma at depth. The vapor pressure fractures the overlying cap rock, triggering swarms of shallow earthquakes and pushing the ground upward. This discovery challenges older interpretations that blamed rising magma for all of Compi Flegri's unrest. While magma at 8 kilometers depth provides the heat, the immediate driver is hydrothermal pressure, not molten rock ascending toward the surface. The distinction matters, because it suggests the risk of an imminent magmatic eruption is lower than previously feared. 
but the risk of a violent phreatic explosion remains very real. Phreatic eruptions occur when water flashes to steam and blasts through the surface, ejecting rock fragments and ash without any fresh magma involved. These explosions can be lethal and occur with little warning. Compiflegri's last eruption, in 1538, was phreatic in nature. It built the Monte Nuovo cinder cone in less than a week and killed 24 people. Monitoring efforts at both volcanoes have intensified in response to the simultaneous unrest. INGV expanded its seismic networks, adding stations around Vesuvius's flanks and Compiflegri's ring fault system. Satellite radar systems track ground deformation with millimeter precision. Gas sensors measure emissions of CO2, SO2, and other volatiles. Thermal cameras watch for temperature changes at fumaroles. All data feeds into the Vesuvius Observatory's monitoring room in Naples, where technicians analyze signals 24 hours a day. But monitoring cannot predict the future. On a cold evening in late December 2024, Marco Esposito stood on his balcony in Torre del Greco, a town clinging to Vesuvius's southwestern flank. The mountain loomed above him, dark and silent against the twilight. He felt the tremor before he heard it, a subtle vibration, like a truck passing on the street below. Then the rumble, deep and guttural, rolling out from the crater. My grandmother used to say the mountain speaks when it's angry, Marco said later, his voice quiet but steady. She was here in 1944. She remembered the lava. I think about her every time the ground moves now. Scientists continue to assess the situation at both Vesuvius and Campi Flegre. The simultaneous unrest has prompted urgent discussions about evacuation plans, infrastructure resilience, and communication strategies. Italian civil protection has allocated 500 million euros for evacuation preparations and building reinforcement. Drills have been conducted in high-risk zones, emergency supply depots have been stocked. But uncertainty dominates every conversation. Researchers do not know if the two systems are truly connected. They do not know if the current seismicity represents a return to activity or merely a temporary spike within a long dormant period. They do not know how much warning time they will have if either volcano begins a genuine reawakening. What they do know is that the region's volcanic risk has never been higher in the modern era. The combination of dense population, aging infrastructure, and simultaneous unrest at two historically violent volcanoes creates a scenario that emergency planners describe as a nightmare. The numbers are stark. Over 500,000 people live directly atop Campi Flegre. Another 600,000 live on Vesuvius's flanks. Millions more occupy the Naples metropolitan area, many in buildings that predate modern seismic codes. A major eruption at either volcano would trigger the largest peacetime evacuation in European history. A simultaneous eruption at both would overwhelm every contingency plan. And now, for the first time, scientists are forced to consider that possibility. The question that haunts the monitoring rooms, the academic conferences, and the quiet moments when researchers stare at seismic traces on their screens is simple and terrifying. If these two volcanoes are connected, what happens when one truly awakens?